Okay, welcome back to the first video on how to build a DIY aquarium controller. These videos are going to show you step by step how to do what I've done here. Uh, just a couple pieces of housekeeping. One is I'm only going to focus on how I did this controller. There are other ways to build a controller, other types of hardware, software, so on and so forth. I'm not really going to get concerned about all the different options. I'm only focusing on what I did and showing you how I did it. So if you're so inclined, you can follow along and maybe recreate it yourself for, for your own needs. Uh, the other thing is because of some limitations with YouTube and, you know, actually time in my life, I'm probably going to have to cut these videos up into multiple parts, but they all will all be part of a playlist on YouTube, probably on the side there. And uh, you can just go and do them that follow them that way step by step. And then uh, lastly will be the format of these videos. So there's going to be two parts of a video. In the description, I'm actually going to put step-by-step -step instructions uh, for you to take and use if you're, you're going to build these things. That's going to be highly valuable because trying to do things DIY from a video, I find, isn't always easy because you're always having to pause it and then trying to remember what was said or done. <clears throat> and if you have the... Uh, instructions written out with you. Uh, you can just follow along that way while you're actually building and then you can use the video as a way to get comfortable with the process and see what actually happens when you do those steps and you can see where maybe in your build there's something a little different or something strange is happening and then you can make some modifications and changes to remedy those types of problems. So without further ado, let's get rolling with the actual build. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a sore throat today, so I might have to clear it a few times. Uh, the first build is a, the first section of the build is going to be concerned with the computer. Uh, that is the system that will, you know, manipulate and run and tell the equipment connected to the controller what to do, how to do, when to do it, and get information. As mentioned, I'm using a Raspberry Pi. I'm using a version zero, which is the cheapest and least powerful, but still certainly more like it's powerful enough to do everything we need. The system is actually very simple. So a zero is more than enough. You can also do it with a Raspberry three plus, maybe a B, whatever their other ones are called. And as long as you have the W, the wireless version, you will be able to uh, essentially recreate these instructions exactly. If you don't get a Wi-Fi version, you'll have to make some changes to the instructions. Uh, you will also need a micro SD card that fits into your Pi. I suggest a 16 gigabyte. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive. Often you can get one with your Raspberry Pi. Sometimes you can get what's called a starter kit. The other thing you're going to need is a power supply for your Pi. Uh, 5 volt 2 to 2.5 amps is recommended. You can get these in Often the phone charger section of things like dollar stores and Walmart or something like that, they're, they're pretty cheap. They're just a couple bucks. And then you're also going to need some kind of cable that comes from your, your charger. They usually have a USB uh, connection. Then you can just put whatever cable you need as long as it comes down to a micro, H, uh, micro USB that plugs into here. So on your Pi, just so you know going forward, uh, the one on the far end is for your power uh, micro USB. The one usually in the middle, micro USB, is for attaching a keyboard and mouse to. And then this over here is a micro HDMI, which has 1080p output. So if you're having problems doing this wirelessly over a Wi-Fi network, you can always plug in a monitor and a keyboard and mouse, usually with a dongle or, or a splitter that, that you can buy. And uh, you can connect to your Pi that way uh, through those systems. And the other thing you're going to need is uh, usually computers, uh, you're going to need a computer to install the operating system and the software that runs our equipment on the Pi, uh, whether that's a Windows box, a Linux box, a Mac box, or, or maybe even a tablet. It really doesn't matter as long as you can manipulate the card, install the software and operating system you need onto the card uh, without any problem. You'll probably need some kind of device like this micro USB card reader or this USB card reader to plug into your uh, computer, laptop, whatever it is, because most of them don't have an actual micro USB card reader. If you got one, that's cool. Uh, and you may also need to make that work a 
SD card adapter. So you get your micro SD card. The way I'm doing it, micro SD card plugs into my SD card adapter, which plugs into my card reader, which plugs into my USB port on the computer. And that's the other thing, uh, when I'm talking about software and stuff in this build, it's going to be based off a of Windows box. Now I also dual boot, dual boot with Linux, but because most people use Windows or understand Windows who have other operating systems, I'm going to be creating the instructions on uh, creating the build on a Windows system. And if you've got Linux or another operating system, you're just going to have to make some modifications which is pretty easy to do and if you're using those other operating systems you probably already know how to do that. So that's the first video in this build. That's the hardware we're going to need to get this section done. Uh, the next video coming up will be concerned with putting the operating system onto the Raspberry Pi and getting it running wirelessly over the Wi-Fi network. Alright, see you there.